my wife came over and helped me flip this upside down. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention earlier is I'm not really following Sonics's recommended way to build this. I'm not, because uh, uh, yeah, I put these extra pieces on in the bottom because I thought it'd be kind of fun to see what it looks like. So now I have to go back and um, do the bottom lawn drawings, which are on the top now. But uh, I just want to at least make sure it was a uh, known that I'm not necessarily uh, going exactly how they suggest to build it. But I thought it'd be more fun this way. So I'll start uh, popping off the the bottom plate, and then uh, clipping these, and then start drilling them. Took the bottom panel off of the top. You can see the dust starting to form. Um, so sometimes things work out. You never know. But um, because the panel's on there, and I have these cross members, I can now see and create the two and a half millimeters or whatever it wanted a spacing a little bit better. So I can line this launcher on up with uh, these cross sections and then I can get them all clipped on. My only concern right now is, uh, and I'm going to look into this a little bit more after I stop the video, but I have the entire thing sitting on a few different areas of, of weight, so I want to make sure that I'm not accidentally loading uh, the skin up so I'm not creating any weird situations where it's going to be, you know, leaning down at the end because I drilled them all one way. But I am only drilling up to the, the 40 size, so I can still drill up to the 30 size afterwards when I put the, um, uh, the, uh, the final, you know, rivets in, and that way I can have it be more square in a different spot and drill the next section. But at least for now, I'll try and get uh, this to the point where there's no bows in the aluminum. I pushed on the fuselage back and forth a little more while I was on the table. And um, it had more bend to it than I wanted, so I put it on the ground with the help of my wife to, to make sure it could be stable. Um, and then my wife came out when she helped me move it down. She said, oh, you're using those little you know, green and blue and black plastic clips. You want any more? And I said, do you have more? And she said, yeah. And so she gave me this huge box full of them so I can use them for a while and then give them back to her later. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, clip it up a little more and then go ahead and start uh, drilling all these, part, all these uh, pieces. I took the lawn drawn out after I drilled it to the 30 size, the higher size diameter. Now I'm going to deburr it and then um, I'm going to need to countersink this because um, the flat metal is going to be dimple dyed and has to go into something so I will countersink um, the lawn drawn so we can be flush with the flush rivets I put in later. And then I think I'll take the, uh, the skin off and I'll go ahead and dimple dye all of that as well too, uh, minus the, uh, the uppermost portion where uh, that the turtle deck will attach, so I'll do that all later. And uh, go ahead and start doing some riveting and get one side done. I'm going to be countersinking this piece right here, all these holes. And um, I want to make sure I countersink it to the proper depth. I don't, if I go too short, it will, um, it will not become flush with the, the piece of aluminum. If I go too far, I'll lose strength. So what it is, I went ahead and took another scrap piece of aluminum, and I, I drilled the proper size hole and I dimple dyed it. And now I have the positive of how big that hole is. So now I can do a couple tests on here and see how far I need to go and make a mental note and kind of recreate that as I go across. All right, so two days ago when I started working on this, I brought this lawn drawn out. So this is two days after the last cut from this video. Um, I brought the lawn drawn out and I was trying to figure out how to countersink properly into these holes because the dimple dyed skin has to go into it. So I called my dad and we had like an hour talk on it and I found out I was doing a lot of things that were wrong. Well, not a lot of things that were wrong, I was just looking at it incorrectly. Um, he suggested I get out these countersink drill bits that he gave me. I said, what are you talking about? And so he um, told me where to find them because so he put them in the package of all the tools he sent me. And this right here is really cool. It has a, a number 30 uh, screw, on, or excuse me, drill on it. And then it goes to the proper 120 degree angle uh, countersink that the rivet and the dimple die will go into. And then this particular part right here, and I'm not going to undo it because I found the perfect size, but you um, unscrew this you pull the channel back and you can rotate it to like microns higher or lower so that way you can countersink every single screw or every single hole to the exact proper size. And so now that I have that set up, I can go back and do all of the holes for all the longerons and any other countersink you have to do in the future. It will all be done um, to the exact proper size. I don't go too far or too short. This is what I thought I was going to use to countersink. I didn't realize there are other tools out there and that's why I'm glad I 
I ended up calling my dad. He said, no, 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 use these things. That's what I gave them to you for. And he gave me three different ones or multiple different sizes. Um, all these other different, uh, you know, heads for it for different sizes. Um, and then another, gosh, couple hundred really high quality drill bits that fit into like the 90 degree angle drill and other things as well too. I know the shop's a bit of a mess right now. I'm having too much fun to stop and clean it up. I think once I finish this section, I'll go ahead and do a complete stop and, and, and re reset everything up. But um, but yeah, so now that I have this working right, I'm going to go ahead and continue countersinking these. And uh, uh, oh, also here's my uh, one of my test pieces. I took the end of the launcher on and I kept trying different heights or depths into the aluminum so that I'd know how far I'm going to go. Um, this right here is a little bit of a scratch for the, the casing keeping it from going too far, but it really doesn't seem to be hurting it more than just cosmetically. Then I'd also go into the bottom and see how far I'm taking material out. And uh, so I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to be um, uh, hurting the piece by countersinking it too far, but I feel very comfortable now. This is also what the RV guys do when they put their launcher on their fuselage. They dimple dye the skin and they um, they uh, uh, countersink their longerons. So um, I feel very comfortable at this. I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to lose any strength by doing it this way. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a, a great system for it. So I'll get back to work. I have dimple dyed the skin, dimple dyed the side frames, and I've countersunk all the longerons. And I've already washed them all down with uh, lacquer thinner and I have painted them with the salt fetching primer. The laundry on is outside dry and this should almost be dry by now. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start uh, cleaning it back together and start driving a few rivets. Got the side panel back on. Notice when you look at the distance between where the laundry on and the skin to come together, let's go to where Cleco is, there's almost a piece of paper with a gap that's from the paint that was put in. So I'm going to test one rivet. If it pulls taut, uh, then it will be proper for the entire thing and I'll go ahead and rivet it all together. If it doesn't pull taut, uh, what I will do is drill it, rivet out, pull the laundry on out, and then countersink just you know, a micron or two of paint off of it just so it fits even more flush. But I don't worry about that too much. I think it's going to be perfect. And I'll go ahead and rivet it all together. I am not going to rivet from this section forward because I'm trying to figure out right now how to do these bolts that will go through here. So I want to do everything uh, flush and the bolts that they suggested are, they have heads on them, so I want to make sure I figure out exactly what to do with that first. But um, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the rest of the rivets because um, the rest of the plans make sense to me for what I'm doing. Got that side completely riveted, minus the ones they told you not to. Again, I'm leaving this space right here unriveted until I know what to do with uh, whether I'm going to try flush screws or what in that particular situation. Um, but I can still bend this back far enough to get any tools in there I need to. But the, the rivets came out very nice, perfectly flush. Um, if you look at the skin to where it meets the laundron, there's only one or two very light areas where it's um, a, a, a hair wide, but um, all the, um, the rivets went off properly, and uh, I don't consider that a danger at all. Um, I think it looks actually pretty good. But... Um, yeah, so I'll keep crunching the other side now, but I think I'm going to call it a day for now. Thanks for watching.